Hey y'all, I'm Laura with Hot Fan Media and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix this common Honda transmission issue. Let's get to it. Okay, so over the past one or two months, we've had a lot of Hondas come through the shop and every single one of them has come in with a transmission judder or a slight slip. If you can't feel it, then you can definitely see it. The needle dances. You're going 30 to 40, 50 miles an hour. You're just putting your foot slightly on the gas pedal and the needle just goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. That is actually the transmission slipping from whatever coasting gear that it's in to a higher gear so that it can go faster but it's actually not going into that gear. It's just going between the gears. What we found out was happening was these transmissions are supposed to be maintenance regularly. I believe it was something like every 5,000 miles, which is a lot considering that most people do not change the fluid on their transmissions. It's not really a thought, but specifically on these Hondas, people who love them, know a lot about them, will sometimes change this fluid every time they do an oil change. One, because it's extremely easy, and two, because the transmission actually needs it. These transmissions that we've gotten a hold of over the past two months, I personally believe have never been maintenanced at all or were not maintenanced within a appropriate time period by the time that we got to them. Honda recommends a four times drain fill. So you drain it four times, you fill it four times. Most people on the forums were saying three and I believe they say three because three is genuinely enough. I have done this process on every single one of these transmissions that came in and it has not worked on only one of them and that was because it has a transmission code it did have the judder problem but it also had another problem where it's completely skipping the gear it's just going from two to four completely skipping third gear and it feels like somebody's ramming into the back of you no that, yep there it was <laughs> okay okay so it can be very, very, very difficult to get the transmission light to come on on these vehicles, but I just had it come on. My guess is that it's going to be the same PO77 or 766, 776 code. If you're having that problem, my condolences. If you have some experience with it, we would love to know. As far as we can tell from this moment, we're likely looking at a transmission replacement. So we've added that information into this video just so that y'all can see the difference. If you're here to fix that problem, the drain fill three times will not fix that problem. I've already been there, done that. But if your problem is you feel like it's not acting quite right, at that low level speed when you're cruising through town or whatever. It's a super easy fix. For every transmission that has come into the shop with this problem, we've started with Seafoam. Seafoam is the brand. They have made a transmission cleaner. Seafoam is going to be added into the transmission before any of the drain fills. It essentially is a chemical that's going to run through the entire transmission as you're driving, cleaning all of the debris and metal shavings, which uh, when that needle is dancing, when it's juddering or slipping. What's happening inside the transmission is it's grinding. When it grinds, there's gonna be metal. While you're driving it with the seafoam in it, expect to be kind of shocked because it gets worse and worse the longer you drive it on the seafoam. I remember the first time I did it, I was in another town when I really started noticing this problem was like, okay, um, I don't think I wanna be in this car right now. I was kind of scared I wasn't gonna get home. It developed a sound that I could actually hear from inside the vehicle. So yeah, seafoam goes first before any drain fills. After you've driven 100 miles, you bring it in and you do the first drain and the first fill. The drain plug has been very accessible and identical on every transmission that I've done this on. It is a square 3 4 inch drive, which essentially means you use a 3 4 ratchet with nothing on it to unscrew the drain bolt. Wow, it's tight. You're going to see a lot of metal. That first drain after the sea foam, it's going to be just caked on the drain plug. It's normal. It's actually a good, a good sign that the sea foam did its job. It's best to drain these when they're 
warm, certainly not at temperature because you will burn yourself. I've burned myself a couple of times on these transmissions, sticking my hand, trying to get to the dipstick, try to drain the transmission after it's cooled down just a little bit uh, and use gloves so that you don't burn yourself. You can wait until the transmission is cool or absolutely cold, but it does not drain as fast. And it is cold right now. Okay, now we're just gonna put the plug back in. And while I'm down here, I'm just gonna mention that, you know, most people think maintenance, transmission maintenance, they think, okay, replace the filter. On some of these, there is no internal filter. Uh, and on all of these, there is an external transmission filter that is supposed to last the life of the vehicle. So when you're doing this maintenance, you shouldn't be really thinking about the filters much. And then you're going to need a torque wrench uh, spec to 36 foot pounds then it's very important to torque it down to spec you don't want it over tightened you don't want it under tightened so once you have it drained obviously you got to fill it if you're going to do this job i would buy the five gallon it's a box and there's a bag in here and it contains five gallons of transmission fluid you're going to need about three for three times drain and flushes about a gallon per drain and fill this saves a little bit of money so i'm just going to fill this up and i have marked a line where when i bought this i bought this for this job so i bought five gallons of this and then i got my six gallon in this so that i could transport the liquid uh, and i marked how full they filled it the whole gallon and then i know that when i put it in it's going to be about here and then you drive it and you need to get it to temperature to know where the level is it needs to be between the two dots at least somewhere between the two dots no more no less you don't want it overfilled you don't want it underfilled it's a hot reading stick not a cold reading stick i'm going to fill it to that line and then i'm not going to put all of the fluid in it i'm going to take it for a drive and then bring it back and check the dipstick again I don't know how they designed a nozzle that doesn't drip, but they surely did. We'll go back to the car. I have two funnels specifically for this job now. I recommend that you use a light whenever you install the funnels because I was in a rush, a vacuum was running, and I did not realize that I had just poured half of a gallon all over the floor. Use a flashlight and you, that won't happen to you. Uh, these are also funnels that I cleaned and I've only been using for transmission fluid. They're a pair now and they're specifically for this job. If you own a Honda and you're learning how to do this maintenance, having a funnel specifically for this job does make it a lot easier. Sometimes if I've got other stuff going on, I will walk away and let these drip down, but this time I'm just going to go ahead and remove them. Dipstick, dipstick tube, and I am going to check the level on this just because it's a good habit to have. It is cold. It'll give you an idea of how far it's going to go down. So the level is what it's about right there, and it will go down until it's between uh, these two dots. So once it's filled, you're not going to know how much should be in the transmission because the fluid is cold. If you know the exact specification of the transmission, how much should be in it, you can gauge how much transmission fluid goes in. But even still, I recommend you just drive it around a little bit, try to get it at least warm so that you can get a more accurate reading of the dipstick. It is a hot read dipstick, not a cold read dipstick, and the fluid really does shrink and expand depending on temperature. So that's something you're going to want to pay attention to before you drive it very far. In between drain and fills, I I drove all the vehicles at least 40 to 60 miles. Really what you're trying to do is get the transmission up to temperature and mixing with the original transmission fluid that's still left in it. The reason why you drain fill three times is because every time you're getting rid of a little bit more of the original transmission fluid that's in the transmission. On other manufacturer transmissions, you would accomplish this by doing a flush. For some reason, and I don't know the reason, that is 
is a huge no-no with a Honda transmission. You do not flush a Honda transmission, you drain fill three times a Honda transmission. So every time you're draining it, you're getting rid of some of the old transmission fluid. I do recommend that on one of those drains, you maybe leave it to drain overnight. And what's gonna happen is over that 12 hours, the fluid is just gonna keep falling down from the top of the transmission to the bottom and draining out. So you're gonna need more than a gallon to put back in it if you leave it overnight. I wouldn't leave it overnight every time. The first time you drain fill, you're really not gonna see a huge difference. It's gonna be better than the seafoam drive, but you're pretty much just gonna go back to how it was before, so don't expect any improvement. The second drive goes way better. It may still slip and judder a little bit, but it's astonishing the improvement that that second drive seemed to do. And then the third drive after that third drain and fill, I mean, at least for me, every time the problem was completely cleared out. It seems like they've stuck to this tried and true design of allowing the owner to take care of their vehicle. These are great transmissions. Honda is a great manufacturer. So if you do take care of it, it will perform well for you. And even if you don't take care of it, it can still bounce back. That being said, we hope you enjoyed the video and maybe found it helpful. As always, I will be happy to answer as many questions as I can in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again in the shop.